Hello and welcome to episode 95 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is May 10th, 2021. Today I'm wearing two fairly old knitted things, but I still like them a lot. <laughs> so this is a, a loop shawl or cowl. Do you call it cowl if it's that long? Maybe it's a, it's, I think some call it eternity shawl or something like that. Anyway, it's this loop um, and I got the um, yarn from friends for one of my birthdays many years ago and um, at that same birthday I got the book Knit Red. It's a book um, with knitting patterns and everything in the book is knit in red yarn and part of the money that um, they got when you bought the book uh, was used to help um, women with heart problems. So they tried to put some attention on the fact that a lot of heart um, problems with women is not really um, well known and researched because a lot of research used to um, be put on men and how they develop diseases and if women were different people just wouldn't know about it. So um, that was the idea behind the book and I like that a lot and every designer in the book tells a little story about um, heart disease in either her family or pro problems she's had herself. So it's a really good book and I forgot to bring it but I'll link it underneath the video. And um, yeah, and because I got the yarn and I got the book with a pattern for my birthday, this is called my birthday loop <laughs> on Ravelry. And the yarn is a hand dyed yarn. Um, the um, dye used to be called Drachenwolle. I think she now goes by Frau Drachenwolle, something like that. And uh, it was the first time I used her yarn and I really like it. It's a bit dark, so you can't really tell the pattern that much, but I didn't mind. You start with the provisional cast on, you knit as long as you want, and then you sew it together. And um, when you use Kitchener Stitch, it's an invisible seam. And I like that. Yeah, so that's my birthday cowl. And I love to wear it with this um, jacket. And this is my the first swirl jacket I ever knit. Um, it's basically an open fronted jacket. So I like to put this, um, this thing in <laughs> to keep it close. And, um, and it's one of those round um, jackets, but it's not just, just a circle with two holes for the sleeves, but it has a very, very clever construction. I'll turn around and maybe you can see a bit of it. Um, so instead of just knitting a circle and then having two holes for the sleeves, you start from the outside in and then you cast off half the stitches and the other half you keep knitting and you increase for the sleeves and then you split for the neck and finish the front of the sleeves and then there's one seam to be sewn. So you sew together the sleeve and then you sew the back um, to the neck bit and then the, the seam ends on the other sleeve. It's a bit difficult to explain. It's not that easy to knit but it's not really difficult either and um, the pattern is in this beautiful book Knit Swirl and every piece, everything in this book is, is a jacket, is a swirl jacket and it just shows how many different ways there are to knit this kind of jacket and there are four basic types that you can knit so you can either have a round um, form or an oval and then the placement of the sleeves can be in the middle or more towards the upper edge and um, so you get four different um, basic shapes and I've knit two swirls so far and both have followed the same shape because this seems to be my favorite shape but I've always wanted to knit all the other swirls as well um, and the one I'm wearing is this is the pattern in the book so the colors are quite different. And um, so the main thing about this um, pattern is that it has the eyelets every now and then. And I like that. And the gauge was um, okay for this yarn because this is Opal sock yarn as usual. And I wanted to knit my swirl with this yarn. So I looked for a, for one of the, for a pattern that had the same gauge. Yeah, so that's the 
swirl and my birthday loop. Um, yep. Oh, by the way, when I wear a jacket on top of this swirl, I like to lift this up, put the jacket on, and then this sort of sits outside the jacket and looks as if that was a shawl. And I like to do that as well. <laughs> Many different ways you can wear this jacket. So, on to finished objects. I have two finished objects today. And I'll start with the smaller one. And that's a pair of socks. Um, even though it's not sock madness at the moment. I mean, it's still sock madness, but I'm knit not knitting anything because I've already finished my um, pair for the last round. By the way, the last round got extended. So last week I told you the round three was going to end Sunday morning. So I was wondering whether or not I already got a new pattern for the sock madness, but they extended it. I don't know if that's ha ever happened before, but people were... Um, taking so long to learn the pattern and to knit the pattern that they decided to um, extend the round. So I think now it finishes Wednesday morning, um, I think is what they said. I didn't really pay attention because I'd already finished my socks, but it means there's no new pattern out yet and won't be until at least Wednesday and maybe they'll even give us a break in between the rounds. Um, so no idea when the next pattern is going to drop. But I've still finished a pair of socks. I finished the London Socks by Mina Philip, Knitting Expat Designs from her ebook Around the World in Eight Socks. And what I think is really interesting is I knit them two at a time and I use the yarn from inside the ball and outside the ball. Um, and I was thinking that way they were going to be quite different because I was starting at different ends of the color pattern and I was um, knitting the, the, um, the color sequence in opposite directions. But they look so alike. It's amazing. I mean, I never knit socks that are alike intentionally, but sometimes it just happens. And with these socks, they just happen to be very, very similar. So there are, of course, certain differences, like there's more blue here than here. But even the heels are a lot alike, I think, considering that I um, knit the yarn in different directions and everything. Yeah, so they are done. I really hope that they fit my friend and that she's going to be very happy. And they are really soft. Um, so, yeah, I hope she'll be really happy with them. And the other finished object is something for myself. And I finished the mohair pullover I was knitting. I loosely follow the pattern of the verse sweater in the book Geek Knits. And I held mohair silk yarn doubled. And in the top part, I used the main color and a glitter yarn. It's, it's a bit lighter. You can see the specks of glitter. And then in the middle, I use the main color held double. And then at, on the bottom, I used a darker glitter yarn. Um, and that's a yarn that I knit a scarf with for my sister's silver wedding. And I'm looking forward to wearing that scarf with this pullover as soon as possible. Um, yeah, and so I ended up not knitting the pullover very long. Um, so I was told that for me, it's, it was better to either have them rather short or really long and not in between um, so I didn't have enough patience <laughs> to knit a really long one and the other reason is I was thinking if I make it a tunic or a dress um, I would always sit on the pullover and because it's mohair silk I didn't really want to put that much stress on the yarn and I thought if it's a bit shorter I mean it's not a really it's not it's not super short um, it's not a crop pullover at all for me, as I'm not very tall. Um, and I'm really happy with the length. And because the sleeves didn't end up being really long, I thought that, um, that on the whole it looks better this way. And it's done. I haven't washed it yet. I'll wash it as soon as possible. Um, I won't block it. I just lay it down flat to dry. And then if the weather allows, I guess that's what I'm going to be wearing next week. In my video yeah so that's the verse sweater really happy with it so that's all my finished objects on to works in progress 
And I only have one pair of socks on the needles. That's really weird. Um, so I was planning to, to start another pair of socks, um, but then something else happened. I'll show you in a minute. Um, and yeah, so I didn't start another pair of socks and I will try not to start another pair until the pattern for the sock madness drops. So um, I'll keep my needles free and, and my hands free for the sock madness sock round four. I'm really excited to see what, what is coming because they say that the patterns are supposed to get increasingly more difficult. And I thought the last patterns um, weren't really easy. <laughs> So I'm really interested in how they are going to to top that. Yeah. Anyway, these are the Paris socks for my sister. I'm knitting Opal subscription yarn for the pattern battle. So this is where everybody knits with this color, this yarn, but everybody has to choose a different pattern. And I chose the Paris socks by Mina Philip out of her ebook Around the World in Eight Socks. And I changed the pattern a little bit so all these... I call them flowers, they're supposed to be in one line and then they're supposed to be another, another line down here and I decided to um, do them like this. Fish lips kiss heel with pattern in the first half of the heel and then I finished knitting the foot and I hope this is long enough and I've started knitting the, the toe but now I need to change the needle because I've done two rounds of decreases and now I have to change to double pointed needles and um, and I think I will let my sister try them on before I finish the toe just in case it's too short then um, I'd rather stop it now and uh, undo the the toe to lengthen it um, and not finish it and then find out they're not long enough so um, yeah these are the Perry socks for my sister this is sock number one once this is done, I'll start sock number two. Yeah, and then the thing that happened is that um, Shira Sarah from Imagine Landscapes designed another mystery gnome. And the first bit of the pattern dropped last Friday, I think. So I'd, um, I bought the pattern as soon as, as it was available and then completely forgot about it. Not completely forgot about it. I, I picked the yarn that I wanted to use. Um, but then I didn't really pay attention to when the pattern was going to drop. And then I got the email. The first part of, of your gnome is there. So I had to start knitting straight away. And as um, this is, oh, I should have said, <laughs> if you're knitting along and you haven't done so yet, you want to look away, I'll show it now. Um, yeah, and so this is this is what I call sock-like project because it's knit on either double-pointed needles or these kind of needles. Um, and I'm knitting with sock yarn uh, and I like it. So it has this um, cable and it has this cable on the side and it's, it's, it's all of it. Um, so I'm not showing it anymore in case you looked away. I'm just showing the yarn that I'm using and I'm using two of the mini skeins that were in my advent calendar. So I had an advent calendar by Voldacke last December and um, I don't think I've used any of the yarn yet and I really wanted to get going. So I picked those two colors um, for the hat and the body of the gnome and I picked this color for the beard and the nose and the hands. This is also yarn by Voldacke. It's, um, it's one of the leftover yarns from my Slip Stravaganza Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West. So that was one of those colors and I thought this is a perfect color for a beard. And um, these are two colors that I would probably not wear because maybe the orange, but the beige um, or light brown is not a color that I would wear. So I thought it'd be perfect for a gnome. I can use it. I can be really happy with it. And the gnome won't mind <laughs> being brown and having an orange hat. hat. And uh, yeah, so I think they look nice together. And um, yeah, so that's what I started instead of casting on another pair of socks. Yeah, so that's that's that. That's all the small, tiny projects. Then on to garments. 
and I will start with the Glacier Tunic by Jorge Locatelli and last week I showed you everything I had knit with this color this is colors in love series by Opal and then I wanted to add in the next color and that's that one that's um, out of the ice cream series and that's what I did. So I finished the rounds that I still had to knit before the second color came in. And then I knit the 12, yeah, um, 12 rows, rounds, <laughs> where I um, knit the two colors in turn. So I would knit two rounds, the new color, two rounds, the old color, and so on and so forth. Um, and this is what it looks like. And I really like it. It's not a it's not a harsh uh, change at all because there's already um, blue in the in the first yarn it's just more of the blue in the second yarn and I really like the transition I'm really happy with it so next I will either have to um, put the the sleeves on waist yarn and the front and back or the other way around and I think I'll go with the other way around of putting the front and back on waist yarn and knitting the sleeves but I thought before I do that I will put in the ribbing here in the neckline because once the ribbing is in here it's easier to measure how long the sleeves are actually going to be um, so if there's no ribbing here it's sort of wider and the sleeves can seem longer than they actually are so I decided and I'll do the ribbing with the first color and then I'll start knitting the sleeves with the second color and when I first thought about how to put the colors um, I was a bit worried that the that color number two and three that I would have enough to do the same number of rounds on front and back as on both sleeves but I realized I already had um, a partial skein of this color from knitting my phantom pullover so I have one and a half skeins of color two and I've checked and I actually have two balls of color three um, which I think was a subscription yarn but I must have um, swapped it with somebody so there's no worries there I can just knit as long as I want so I, I want to knit the upper arm with color two and the lower arm with color three and then the corresponding um, number of rounds on front and back so um, that they will sort of line up and then I'll use colors four and five for the bottom part of the tunic or rather the dress um, because I really do would like to to make a dress out of this yeah so I'm really happy with having started color two and the next step will be to knit the the ribbing in the collar in the neckline and the other pullover I knit um, I forgot how far I was last week. Um, had I already started a sleeve? Or had I just, I think I had started a sleeve. I don't know. Anyway, but now I finished both sleeves. They are very short, so it wasn't a problem to knit them. Um, I did not do any decreases or increases in the main part of the sleeve. So in this part of the sleeve. And I um, I thought it was quite interesting how the colors sort of um, I did, they, they didn't really pull but they sort of got organized and the same pattern repeated um, again and again I really like that with these mini stripes and after I finished the stock in that bit of the sleeve I did increase the number of stitches because that what I that's what I plan to do uh, on the bottom of the front and back I want to increase the stitches and then from the waist down goes go straight into the um, into the ribbing so that's what I did on the arm as well it doesn't really show a lot because the ribbing pulls in but I think you can see that it doesn't get smaller and that's because I have more stitches in the ribbing than I have in the stockinette bit um, I had a difficult time casting off because I was thinking or oh, I did do a bind off with an eye cord. I did an eye cord bind off. That's what the pattern calls for. And I thought with the eye cord, it will sort of pull it out a little bit. And I thought I would get a bit of a bow sleeve kind of thing. 
but it didn't work out at all. I mean, it did work out in that it got a lot wider, but then what happened is that it um, kept flopping up like this. So it looked quite impossible. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. It didn't really fold over like that, but just sort of sort of like that. And it looked just a bit weird. So I undid it and then I tried another cast off and I didn't like it. And I tried another one. And I think in the end, I had tried five different ways <laughs> of casting off stitches. And then I just did the ordinary normal way of knitting two stitches and then pulling one over the other, knitting another one and then pulling the next over. I tried to do it um, a bit more loosely than usual. And now I'm really happy with the way it looks. Um, it still pulls out a tiny little bit. And I think I might, um, once I wash the pullover, I'll maybe block the, the, the ribbing just a bit so it doesn't pull in. Yeah, so both sleeves done. That's good. I've continued knitting on the front and back just a tiny little bit. Um, this is, where is it? This is where I um, attach the new ball of yarn. So it's just a few rounds. Um, I haven't tried it on after I finished the sleeves. That's what I wanted to do, but I forgot about it. And I just uh, started knitting, but I only did like two or three rows, so it doesn't matter. And, um, but the next thing I'll do is try it on, see how much further I have to go to, to um, hit my um, waist. And then I'll have to see uh, how many stitches to increase for the ribbing and then see if my plan works out or not. I'll tell you all about it next week. So that's the, yeah, that was the second pullover that you already know about. And that, now I have another new cast on. I cast on three new things last week. Only finished two, but still one of them is small. Two of them are small, so I don't feel too bad. <laughs> um, yeah. So I started a new crochet project and I am crocheting another pattern by Heather from Heather Designs, Heather HGDC, Heather Griffin, HG Designs Crochet. I've linked it underneath the video and it's not linked. Um, I do link my Ravelry page for my project, but I cannot link to her, pro to her pattern because she doesn't sell her patterns on Ravelry. She sometimes has a pattern page for her designs. I, I'm guessing she will do them for her other projects as well. But right now, this project is not on Ravelry yet, but it's already a um, pattern that's been published. So if you want to get it, you have to go to her website. And I have linked her website underneath the video where I have a number of websites. It's quite to the bottom of all the different things that I'm linking. And, um, and it's an affiliate link. I'm not sure we, I think it's, uh, we mentioned it down there as well. So affiliate link means that if you go to her website through my link, and then you do buy one of her patterns, that I get um, a small percentage of, of what you pay. So you don't have to pay more by going through my link. It's just that I get a little reward for um, having talked you into looking at her patterns. Something like that. Yeah, so um, the last project I crocheted was the um, example sweater that I showed a few weeks ago. And that's been published now. You can get the pattern there. You can get the pattern for the promise dress that I crocheted, test crocheted last year. Um, she also has a, her first pattern was the, um, I think it was Revival. It's, it's a cropped pullover. Um, and now she has two hacks of that pattern and one of those I want to crochet at some point. But now I started crocheting Invested. That's the fourth pattern available on her website so far. And this was the first um, like gauge swatch that I made um, to try out the colors and to see if the needle was the right one and it wasn't. So this is a bit too small. So I changed to a bigger needle, but I didn't want to undo it. So I just, I'm just keeping it as a, like a coaster to put my cup, my mug on. And um, yeah, but these are four of the five colors that I want to use. And I'm using a rather, for me, a rather unusual yarn. It's a pure acrylic yarn. It's called um, Bravo by Schachenmeier. So it's a big company here in Germany. And I'm selling, I, I've always sold this yarn in my shop 
um, especially for beginners who just want to try things and who are still practicing because it's a very affordable yarn. So even if you don't manage to make something um, and you end up <laughs> throwing your everything out, it won't be too bad if it's um, a cheaper yarn. And also if you make, um, you can use it for blankets, you can use it for toys um, and also for kits, knits that... Um, Kits just grow out of so quickly. <laughs> you don't always have to buy the most expensive yarns, I think. So um, I once knit a kit's cardigan out of this yarn, but I haven't so far. I've never knit anything or crocheted anything for myself to wear. So I thought I'll change that. And because Invested is a vest that you has a fairly big neckline, has very big uh, wide armholes. So you're supposed to wear it on top of other things. And I thought I can I can wear this. Um, I won't be wearing it directly on my skin. That's what I'm trying to say. So I don't mind that it's acrylic. And um, I'll see how I like it when it's done. So these, as I said, these are four of the colors that I'm using. And the fifth color is a light gray. So this is, it's not hugely bigger. It's just a bit, oh, I'll have to show it this way. So you can see it's just a bit bigger, but it's, as it's bigger this way and that way it does make a difference and also by crocheting a bit more loosely it's softer so I really like it um, and the plan is to crochet the first four rounds and do 20 something pieces <laughs> and then the last round is always going to be dark blue and then um, and I'll use the last round to crochet the pieces together this is why I haven't finished crocheting this I I'll probably even um, undo some of it once I start assembling in the pieces but I wanted to see how big it actually is with five rounds so that's why and I wanted to see what the colors look like so that's um, why I started doing the fifth round and I have crocheted those other pieces and as you can see the first round is always the dark blue the last round is always going to be the dark blue and then in between I am using the white, the light grey, the neon pink and the slightly darker pink and I'm really happy with it and with this, using this I can always um, sort of put, put the square there and I can have a look at what it looks like once the dark blue um, is attached and I'm really happy with it. I think this is going to be a really bright and um, happy looking vest. Yeah, and if you want to crochet your own, you can use the link I'm providing underneath the video, but you can just look for um, HGDC, HG Designs Crochet, and go directly to her website, or you can go through Ravelry, you can find her on Ravelry, and then go directly to her website. Many options to get the pattern. Yeah, so that's that. Then on to blankets. I crocheted a little bit on the dinosaur blanket and I did another square. Haven't done, um, this was the, this um, square was the first uh, thing I crocheted, I think, from that pattern. Or did I do the dinosaur first? I don't remember. Anyway, I um, need another, I now need another three of those squares. Um, and I, I thought I crocheted two or three of the triangles, but this morning I could only find the one. I'm absolutely positive I did at least two, but I don't know where I put it. <laughs> so I'll have to um, go searching um, for, for the other pieces. And I crocheted this triangle while I was um, going for a walk with my husband. And people are always surprised that I knit and crochet while I walk. But it's not really that difficult. So, I mean, you can... You can try knitting or crocheting while you stand and then you can just take a step and you can see if it works or not. And for me it works and um, not everybody has to do it, but I think it's, um, it's a good way of using my time while I'm out and about. Anyway, that brings us to the two knit-alongs that I am running at the moment and one of them is for dishcloths. And last week I showed you the beginning of my crochet cloth and I finished it. I crocheted until it was about a square and then I decided to do an edge around it and because 
I think it's really important that you can hang, hang your dishcloths so they can dry. Uh, and I don't like to search for the, for the hanger. <laughs> I decided to put um, loops all around the dishcloth so you can hang it any which way. Um, yep, so I'll oh, have to snip that off. I crocheted it in, but I still have to cut it off. Otherwise, this is finished. And I started the next one. And at first I um, thought I was going to um, switch between knitting and crochet. But then when I was looking at things, uh, at what to do, I realized I could um, do a Tun Tunisian crochet. I think that's what it's called. So you have a crochet hook, but you have a long one. I have one that you can screw a cable on so you can decide how long it's going to be and it has to be at least as long as the piece that you are crocheting because you pick up loops the whole length of what you're doing so this is a bit too long but without the cable it would have been a bit a bit too small and if they're too scrunched up they might fall off the other end and um, so i started with the red i started with the like my book says it's the ordinary tunisian crochet stitch and then I did uh, one round one row of yellow so it's it's two passes for every row um, did the two passes with the yellow and then I did the knit stitch and I think that's really funny because it really looks as if it was a stockinette stitch but the back looks completely different it has these ridges and it's it's a lot thicker than um, than knitting yeah, but I really enjoyed doing that. And then I took, um, did one row or two passes of the blue. And then I will continue with the red. And I want to um, just try out several um, different patterns. Um, I have this book about Tunisian crochet. It's in German. I'm not sure whether it's available in English. If it is, I will link it underneath. Um, but it's a really big book about Tunisian crochet. And I've I don't think I've ever used it before. So now I want to at least use it to um, try out several of the patterns that are in the, um, so the book contains the basics and then several patterns and then several projects. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying something new there. And then the last knit along is the optic blanket. And that's where the third new cast on comes into play. Um, because I have, this is the nine by, uh, three by three square I'm working on at the moment. And this is the square I knit last week. It's a Regia sock yarn, DK weight. And um, as I told you, I'm going, I'm using all the blue colors at the moment. So the next square that I'm going to knit, I want to attach here. So I have like a cross and then ca I can fill in all the corners. Um, yeah, and I've told you before that I am knitting these three by three squares um, separately and then once they are done, so this was, I think this was the first one and then this was the second one and now I'm working on my third and basically you could knit the whole blanket by attaching one square to the blanket that you already have. But the problem is that while you knit, you have to move the whole blanket. And um, I noticed that even with nine squares, it gets a bit cumbersome to, um, to move the whole thing around. So I decided to not attach more than nine squares at one go. But later on, it, um, sew those. I'm going to make six of those three by three squares and then I'll sew them together and I had promised that I'm going to make a video to show how to sew them together but because I'm knitting with black yarn as my main color it's really hard to show on camera so I promised to knit more squares <laughs> with a lighter color and then show the sewing with those and that's what I finally started so this is a small square um, and my plan is to do four of those and I will knit the next one onto this one. So I have one line that shows me what it looks like when it's knit together. And then I will knit two separate little squares and those two I'm going to sew onto the other two and sew them 
to each other. And that's what I'm going to use for the tutorial video. So this is a light yarn, it's easier to see. And then um, the next thing I'm going to do is pick up stitches around the whole two by two square and make one big square at the back and I'll put a cushion in and this will be a very nice pillow or cushion for our sofa. That's the plan. So this is, um, yeah, a small cast on that I've been planning to do for a long time and now finally got around to doing. Yeah, so that was everything I knit and crocheted last week. Um, next week there should be at least the beginning of another sock, sock madness sock, I hope. Um, and if not, I will we'll have had time to continue on all the projects I'm already working on. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!